We have all of our regulars today. I'm very happy. Dave Erickson, haven't seen him in a while. I know. Hello, everybody. Hi, Hi everyone. Hi. Franciele, so good to see you. Glenn. Good to see you too. Wow. And Dave Erickson, I want to see your face. I don't know. Dave, if you ever have a chance to turn your camera on, we'd love to see you. And I know Joy always is one of our HPF moms and she joins us each week. Hi, Joy. I know she's probably multitasking right now with her voice. <laughs> Karen and Jeff, also wonderful to see you too as well. Well, I'm going to go ahead and get started so we can kind of stay on time. Um, we have a really special guest today. It's our fourth international guest um, joining us all the way from Glasgow in Scotland, which is really exciting. Um, so a couple of Zoom rules before we get started for those of you um, who have, um, haven't participated in a while or, you know, um, just to get started. Zoom rules, mute yourself when you're not speaking. We recommend speaker view for presentation. Video sharing is optional, though we'd love to see your smiling faces. Um, please type all questions and comments into the chat. I will read them out loud. I'll monitor the chat the whole way. Um, we love hearing from you and engaging with you. Um, so please, please feel free to use this, that as much as possible. We will have a Q&A um, at the end with our guest speaker um, where you can unmute yourself and um, ask any questions you want. So um, there will be time for that at the end. A quick update from Autism Tree. We have now reached over 572,000 in our social media channels across all of them since March um, shelter in place last year in March. Um, this is all of our social media. We've been on every platform um, except for TikTok. That's one that we will get on eventually, um, but Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, um, Twitter, YouTube, we're all doing that. So thank you to my interns who helped me manage those each week um, and to everyone who has been following us on social media. Our posts have been shared over 981 times. We're almost to a thousand. I'm so excited. This is amazing. Thank you to everyone who has been sharing our content, especially this month during Autism Acceptance Month. Um, we're having a lot of fundraisers and really fun activities and events going on this month um, to raise awareness for autism and our community. So thanks to everyone who has been sharing our posts. We have now posted 373 videos on our YouTube channel. Um, subscribe today. It's really easy. It takes one second. Um, if you have any questions, you can always reach out to me. We have 120 subscribers right now. So shout out to every one of those subscribers. Thanks for following us. We do post on a weekly basis. Um, and I'd say we post anywhere from one to three videos each week. So um, you can definitely follow us through there. There's something for everyone. 323 of those videos have been posted since March 12th of last year, um, which blows my mind. A majority of those are from our volunteers, our program managers, um, basically our community members, anybody who wants to interact and engage with our um, kids and families and communicate in that way. Um, thank you so much for submitting those videos. A couple of, um, we've been doing a couple of video series. One is our Rating with Autism Tree series where our volunteers read a children's book. Um, we have a ton of children's book. We have an HPF Little Free Library that's located at our founder's home um, in Point Loma. Um, so if you want a children's book and you want to read um, a children's book to one of our kiddos, you can pick one up there. Um, and we posted 106 videos of uh, our reading with Autism Tree and reached over 52,000 people just through that series. Um, we've also provided 252 virtual events to date with 14 events coming up between now and the end of May. We do add our events weekly and monthly. Um, so stay tuned on our event calendar. There's always something coming up for our families and our volunteers to participate in. Um, all of those programs have been virtual, which is incredible. Um, and we've been able to pivot 19 of our 20 programs onto virtual platforms, um, which is what those events fall under. So thank you to everyone who's been um, sharing and participating in our virtual events. Um, we hope to see you on Zoom um, 
every week. <laughs> All right, without further ado, I'll hand it off to Dana. She's our co-founder and volunteer executive director, and she'll introduce our 48th Lunch and Learn guest speaker this week. Thank you, Rebecca. It's so great to be here with everybody. And just to reaffirm, I usually like to tell you something that came out um, when we were talking on the pre-call with Chris is just how much Rebecca and I um, truly love these lunch and learns with you guys. And it's something that is hard to really honestly put into words, but when trying to explain it, like on the pre-call with Chris, it's really just the authenticity that each speaker brings every week and, and the authenticity that each of you bring just bringing yourselves, bringing your own experiences, being open to learning, being open to sharing. Everything we've accomplished during this pandemic has been a collective effort together. And um, I don't like to overuse words, but I do think authentic is really what it is. It's everybody being their authentic self and bringing what they, the best part of themselves and healing the parts that are just really tough right now. Um, I know there's not a person breathing on uh, the global planet that isn't having some things that are just soul level challenging to breathe through. And um, so I just thank everybody. I thank Rebecca for her intention of really um, making every week, it seems to me, feel better than the week before. I'm extraordinarily grateful to you for that, Rebecca. And I'm grateful for Chris for coming in from Scotland. Um, I do want to take a moment, Chris, I didn't do this on the Great call, but I would love it if you would tell everyone, um, and I do have like a whole intro I'm gonna do to you, um, and it's very personal in, in recognition and sort of reverence to just who you are and what you brought to our ATPF family, and it'll always be part of our legacy. Um, having you here from Scotland today is just extra special, but if you wanted to just kick off for a moment and say, how did you find ATPF? And what was it like when you came into our office? I want to relive that with you and everyone on here today. <laughs> Definitely. Um, yeah, let me start over with introducing myself briefly. As I know a few of you guys know me, a few, a few of you guys don't know me. Um, so in the end, yeah, I'm 28 years old. Um, I was born and raised in Germany. Um, but actually my family, so all of my family is pretty much in Düsseldorf, where I'm from in Germany, besides my sister. She actually lives closer to you guys. She's up in Los Angeles right now. Um, but yeah, the reason why I got in the end also with ATPF and um, I got to the US was actually because of soccer. Um, so back in the day when I was in Germany, I played for Cologne um, in the youth team. It was a pretty decent youth team. And this is in the end like how I got to the US um, through a soccer scholarship. Um, and I used to play for North Carolina at Greensboro um, for four years where I did my undergrad. And then I actually um, transferred to Point Loma um, Nazarene University, um, close to um, ATPF, um, where I was doing my master's. Um, but yeah, this is in the end how I got, um, uh, like got started with ATPF. I believe it was in January 2017. Um, it was actually, yeah, I just had like, I was joining a similar organization, I would say, um, and I want to be brief because I, I'm sure I, I will cover some of that later on again. Um, but in the end, I, I had like some of the similar organization I joined in North Carolina, just a really yeah, a smaller level, I would say. Um, but in the end, I wanted to kind of keep up the same work, same organization, same style, um, definitely also when I was uh, moving to San Diego. And yeah, one, I think it was January 2017, um, I went to the office I met, um, I met Lisa and she, yeah, she was like, who are you? Like, what do you want? <laughs> and um, yeah, I, I told her, yeah, I, I saw you guys have different kind of sport um, programs going on with football, with baseball, with USD, I believe, for example. Um, and I saw that there wasn't a soccer program yet. So I thought, hey, we could try and check it out. Uh, maybe there's an opportunity here. And then I think a month later, actually, uh, we walked the soccer field with Lisa and also with John. I saw John is joining as well. Uh, good to see you. Um, and then I think actually a few months, maybe two months later, we actually already had our first uh, meet and greet and we played soccer with the kids and the families. We just, <laughs> um, hey, John. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, I believe um, uh, the first year we had three events, um, but I will, in terms of the events, I will um, touch base a little bit more in depth in, in just a second after, after I let Dana take Oh, I love it. It's just, um, it's really perfect intro in that I always think about a question that I want to ask um, Chris to kind of kick things off. And 
in the beginning uh, weeks, I didn't t um, ask the speaker to answer the question, but really when I look at, um, you know, what makes someone, you know, when you mentor someone, have, the question is, have you mentored someone else? I wanted to, to kick that off to the group and have everyone type something in, but I did feel inspired by thinking about this and and really, truly, Autism Tree Project Foundation was built on the premise of I'm learning as a new parent. And pretty much every single day that I was learning, I was bumping heads with other parents in therapy offices and hospitals and everywhere I was at with Garrett. And I would just share what I would had learned with that parent and start paying it forward and really I guess what inspired me is the 10 people that had been referred to me organically. And each one of those people was a very busy individual. Um, and they took time out in, and, and they didn't, they didn't let it, it wasn't about if I was interrupting them, they stopped what they were doing is what I saw them do and attend to, to my needs um, as a mother who was struggling to understand what, what an autism diagnosis was and in 911, how to get my son help. I experienced these 10 very different people that people I knew had referred me to, sort of like stopping everything and attending to helping me. And that stayed with me, um, you know, very deeply. So that when I had another parent or someone in front of me that was um, sort of like a mirror looking at how I had been, I stopped what I was doing and I attended to helping them. And so, that's kind of the, the model of how the foundation was built is pay it forward. And I think it's just um, extraordinarily beautiful and honestly, soul level when someone like yourself, you know, Chris came in and just brought everything you had to give and you did it so generously, you did it so authentically. And then even when I met your parents, like we were talking on the pre-call, sort of like how it like a little bit broke me open as a parent to imagine your parents experiencing their son and what you had done for our organization and us just wanting to, to shine the light on your parents and tell them what a blessing you are. Their son was such a blessing. And it was just one of the um, more like soul level moments that I'll you know, always cherish. And I had that, that gift today to do with everybody because Chris is here. But Chris, if you want to um, kind of give your answer, uh, it's, there's no wrong or right. Just like, have you ever mentored someone? It could be anything you want. It doesn't necessarily have to be autism tree. It's just, you know, a question to kind of get the conversation going. Yeah, the, f the first thing that came to my mind, like, you know, in terms of like, even with ATPF, right, mentoring others, I think it was actually also one of the more inspiring moments I had with ATPS. Um, of course, most inspiring was definitely to see, you know, the joy from everyone. But in the end, what I also see a little bit of mentoring is also not just the attendees um, joy, but also my teammates. Um, because in the end, what I found is, you know, everyone who then attended, you know, made these events so special, um, you know, and they wanted to get more involved, more and more, you know, it gave like everyone so much. So I felt like involving my teammates more in those kinds of activities, you know, it was kind of like a mentorship and, you know, opening eyes and just like, you know, wanting to get more involved because, um, yeah, it just gives everyone so much, I feel like, right? So I feel like that could be a good example for, for me here. <laughs> yeah, no, I love it. Like the question I pick is just um, in an effort to reflect on you personally um, and our memories and what the heart that you brought to Autism Tree. I picked out this video and when I was watching it, I just, um, I really loved it. It's only like a minute long. And I want to see how you personally feel after watching um, this kind of one minute on what does it mean to be a mentor? So we get a lot of questions about being a mentor. What does it mean to be a mentor? Will you be my mentor? Will I be your mentor? Things like that. Um, here's what I've learned about mentorship. Um, mentorship is not something you ask somebody to do. Like, will you be my friend? It doesn't work like that. Um, when you find somebody you get along with, you share values, you share beliefs, you spend time with them, you get to know them, you develop trust, you take, uh, uh, you, you're vulnerable with them, you open up to them, and you discover that you become friends. It's what happens. You start off as simply acquaintances. 
um, in, in my experience, mentorship is exactly the same. Um, there were people who were much more experienced than me, who had wisdom that I didn't have. And I, when I would call them, they would take my calls. And when, when I would ask them questions, they would always take the time to give me answers. And over the course of time, they became my mentors, like they became my friends. And I remember one time I was with one of my mentors, Ron Bruder, an amazing guy. Um, and I was leaving his house and I put my arm around him. And I said, you know, I'm glad you're my mentor. And he looked at me and he said, I'm glad you're mine. And it caught me completely off guard. And true mentorship, like true friendship, is not a one-way street. It's not about one person only giving advice to the other. Both people are showing up to give and both pe people are showing up uh, to learn. Um, but you can't ask someone to be your mentor, especially someone who's a total stranger, knock on their door and say, will you be my mentor? If they don't know you and you've never met them. It's like friendship. You cultivate a relationship. And if that person is always there for you and wants to see you thrive and succeed and believes in you, then perhaps they will become your mentor, like making a friend. Mm -hmm. I love that video. Chris, what do you think of um, the way he talked about mentorship? Yeah, I love it too. I actually um, watch also uh, with my company, we also watch quite a few videos of him. Um, I think it's really inspirational as well. You know, just looking at even in terms of mentoring, you know, seeing it out of a different perspective, you know, as I guess a business would see a mentor, you know, so I really love it. You know, it's, it's uh, yeah, meaning, a meaningful mentor attitude, I would, I would call it, I guess. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I love it. I think, you know, it's also um, the essence of, of, the foundation uh, heartbeat is built on this, um, you know, like I said, the pay it forward model is turns out to be that we're learning from each other and we're growing and, and it creates this incredible friendship that feels more like a family, you know, like seeing you today, I'm introducing you as part of the family. And I very much feel that not just the cool thing is not just to you, but also I'll always feel that connection to your parents too. So I hope you'll also give them my lo our love today. And we have a special quote we picked out for you too, Chris. If your actions inspire others to dream more, learn more, do more, become more, you are a leader. And I think this just nails who you are, Chris. And I just couldn't be more um, grateful to have you here today and kind of bring out the photos, memories of uh, these fun times we had together kicking off with um you in the far upper uh, left hand corner with lisa and john hickey who's on the call today and i believe oh that's the view with um with our our um dad from brazil who's actually was you're our fourth international speaker he did one of the um lunch and learns during the pandemic too and Rebecca, is there any way you could bring me up on the screen? I'm not seeing anybody. I don't know what happened. Do you know what happened? I want to look at the photos and then be able to talk. And for some reason, I'm not able to do that. All right. Can you see yourself now? Yeah, but I can't see the photos. Okay, there we go. Thank you. Uh, and there, there's the photo, you guys. It's the third over from the left. That photo is the one that we framed. There might have been others in the frame, but we for sure had that one in there of you with one of our kiddos mm -hmm. um, that we gave your parents. And I love that photo. I love all of them, but I love that memory. I love that photo of you and Rebecca on the far upper right-hand corner. And then these are just some really fun photos of you out there mentoring our kids. The great turnout. Um, you can just feel the energy and feel the love of the, of the program you started with our kids out there at PLN Youth Soccer. These are really fun memories, Chris. I always love my memories of you at the Autism Tree office. This was actually at the far top left at our VIP reception. Mm -hmm. And it's great to see you mixing it up with um, some of our, our donors that support us. And then I remember the thank you party where we sent Garrett off to college. That's a great photo, um, the summer thank you party 2018. And the core team meetings. Um, it was really fun to see you with those kids from Nestor Language Academy in the far um, left bottom corner. Uh, those kids were all very deep and had such personal stories that end up coming out over time. And it's really, honestly, when I look at those pictures from the core team meetings, those three pictures, it's all right there. When, the, when you come to the Autism Tree office and especially a core team meeting, it's like, uh, it's like a family meeting, a family get together. And 
um, so many, so many things happen over time. And that picture on the far left uh, with Chris, with those three kids from Nestor Language Academy, they all came so alive um, during their time at the foundation. And they made me fall in love with Nestor Language Academy, which has a long history with ATPF. And then in the far right is Giving Tuesday. And I definitely remember how much fun it was having you guys work Giving Tuesday with us and you brought in your friend and it was awesome. Is there any other photos? Yes, Tiffany's. And these ones are great, you guys. Look extra close. These are Chris brought his parents. So the far left is uh, Chris with his beautiful parents that he brought to our luncheon. And this was a thousand person luncheon at the Del Mar Fairgrounds in 2018. And the one next to it, of course, was um, some of our other donors and his parents. And then this was really fun. Um, the day after the luncheon, we had a, a number of people in town from Northern California. And so next to uh, Chris's dad is Laura Bonafidi Odom, who's on our board and has um, triplets and her girls have autism. And then her um, sister-in-law, Dina, and they raise all our money doing a golf tournament for 10 years in Northern California. So it was very fun. Um, for them also to get to meet your family. Chris, we call the Bonafides in Northern California our United Nations and <laughs> their families just from all over. Um, and we love it. So I love it was really special, Chris, to have those photos and memories. And everybody that's on here, um, please know how much we cherish um, you know, taking photos and looking back because we, after 17 years, we've done so much together. Even Chris, when you look at your time here, there's hundreds more photos. Those are just some highlights. And it just really brings alive um, the heartbeat that you brought to ATPF and that you have a family that's always here for you. And this is something great that came out of Zoom is we're now able to connect on this call. Um, Jeff Snyder's coming to you from Massachusetts. He is on our neuroscience committee and was one of our presenters last year. And he's a very big global advocate for autism and really speaks with his voice um, from the autism's perspective. So we're always really grateful um, to be able to have that connection with Jeff now weekly. So with that, I wanna give you a warm welcome, lots of love and say thank you. It's so great to have you here, Chris. Awesome. Thank you so much, uh, Dana. Yeah, I'm super excited, guys. Um, thanks for having me. Thanks for the intro. Um, I guess today I wanted to use the time, you know, to speak about a few different topics and things um, with you and I guess also answer several questions as we go, you know, such as, of course, who am I? Um, I covered some of it, I guess, at the beginning. Um, but yeah, the most, more importantly, you know, I, I will talk again about uh, why and how I got involved with ATPF a little bit more in depth. Um, and then about the program itself. Um, good that you mentioned the pictures because I also have a slide, um, a smaller presentation prepared that I wanted to show you guys, kind of like also to show you what we actually did with the kids um, and the families. Um, then I will talk definitely about what ATP uh, means to me and also how it kind of like shaped me, you know, what experience we had together and then talk about, you know, a few lessons I learned from ATPF but also from, I guess, living across different continents and yeah, meeting people from, and uh, yeah, every, from all around the world, having good friends from all over the world. And then I guess in the end, we, I can also touch about, you know, how COVID impacted, impacted my life this past year. I'm sure, like you said, Diana, it, it did for all of us, um, but maybe also give you some um, ideas on how I cope with it uh, the best way, I guess. <laughs> um, perfect, are there any questions beforehand um, or should I just dive right into yeah. Thing. You can go ahead and dive right in. I'll let Perfect. I'll monitor the chat and ask any questions if anybody wants to type them in. Perfect. Awesome. Thanks so much, Becca. Um, yeah, before I start, um, you know, how many of you have been actually to a soccer event in the past? Um, I don't know, maybe I can see some hands or feel free to unmute yourself. I'm not sure if you have been um, as a parent or Becca has been. <laughs> <laughs> a few of us. <laughs> John, definitely. I see your hand. <laughs> Perfect. Um, great. So I guess in terms about myself, you know, I've, I've touched a little bit, you know, I'm 28 years old. I was born and raised in Germany. My family's in Germany. My sister is here. Um, in the end, I got to the U.S. because of soccer, playing soccer. And then also that's how I kind of like got started with um, ATPF, of course, uh, playing soccer for Point Loma Nazarene University. Um, but I think what's also worth mentioning here is I also took part in other events with ATPF. For example, one that I remember in which I 
uh, I loved in the end was the Wild Willow Farm and the Education Center. Um, I don't know, have anyone else have been there from, from the call here? It's, it was also an amazing event. Yes, our food farming and nutrition program. We'd have um, workshops, mm -hmm. six workshops at Wild Willow Farm in South Bay. I know um, Joy has definitely been there with her boys. Mm -hmm. Um, and Glenn Lasker, who's on the call, he's a volunteer. He's helped there. Francielli, I don't know if you've been there, um, but it was really fun. And so I think maybe Dave Erickson too, but mm -hmm. quite a few of us. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah, I can definitely recommend as well. And I remember not every time, but one time we made like, um, you know, with all the veggies and stuff we picked, we made the pizza. I think they have like a big pizza oven, right? Outside. Yes. Um, so that was amazing. Um, yeah, but I guess now, um, after I finished my master's in San Diego at Point Loma Nazarene University, I actually got a job up in um, Orange County in Anaheim, close to Disneyland, which is good. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I'm in digital advertising. Um, but whenever I left San Diego, you know, as I moved up to Orange County, actually Hunter, um, a teammate from the men's soccer team from PLNU, he took over the ATPF soccer program, which is amazing, you know, to still... Obviously, I want to support, you know, from where I can, but obviously being physically not there, it's not, um, you know, you're not able to um, lead the, the team as well. So Hunter has been doing a great job in terms of, you know, getting those activities still going on. And um, I'm sure, you know, we will have a lot more in the future as well with the soccer team. Um, and then, yeah, I think... Um, Something that I wanted to talk to you guys about were definitely the event activities itself. Um, you know, I definitely wanted to use the time to kind of re reflect what we did with the kids and the families. Um, I do, if it's okay, I would share my screen actually for a second here. Go for it. You should be good to go. Um, awesome. You guys should see my screen, right? Yes. Perfect, perfect. Um, so let me know if anyone also can recognize themselves in the picture. That could be it as well. Um, but I think to start off here, this is also like a group picture. Um, it was actually, it might've been one of the ones that uh, you guys had in the, in the beginning as well. Um, but I wanted to show you guys some pictures also to show the different activities we, th we did, um, you know, during one of these events. Um, this is another group picture um, where the uh, turnout rate also uh, was increasing, you know, a lot more people from the first event, of course, which actually was quite soon after we kind of like wanted to get this program up and running. Um, we saw a lot more um, kids and families sign up for the following events, um, which was really, really exciting, great to see. Um, and then, yeah, pretty much at the beginning, right, we talk about uh, what we're going to do with the kids, with the families, because in the end we have different station, stations built up where we do different kind of exercises. Obviously, everything kind of like involves a ball as we play soccer in our free time. We like to play soccer. Um, but you can see also here in this picture, um, you know, we uh, kind of like as a warm up as well. We, we kick around a bit, we pass the ball, but you can already see in the back, you can see some, um, yeah, kind of like slaloms, right? So we have like some parkour where you can dribble the ball. We juggle the ball together, you know, in smaller groups and bigger groups, whatever, you know, um, whatever, like each each individual feels like in that and during the moment because we have a big team you know we have a lot of players I think actually back then we were almost 30 players you know so we have groups that can split up and you know be, be smaller groups be bigger groups but in the end we ended up besides passing and juggling the ball we also had like mini games with um, you know shooting on the goal we had big games um, and we actually ended up one time when you know one of our teammates was in goal and with all the kids and attendees kind of like lined up on the six yard box and just shot as hard as they could and of course my teammate wasn't able to you know save 10 balls at the same time but it was quite funny and I think it also brought a lot of joy to some of the attendees there <laughs> um, but yeah I think the most important part and I almost forgot um, was the pizza at the end so at the end of the events right we we had pizza coming where yeah everyone kind of like talked about the like a, a good goal they shot during the event and so on so that was really nice to yeah just sit down with the team, but also with the families and the kids to reflect on, you know, some of the things we, um, we, we did throughout the event. Um, then you can see some of the, um, yeah, more action photos. Um, I'm sure you guys um, recognize some of the attendees here and some of the families, some of the kids. There's also within the slalom, juggling the ball. And this is, uh, yeah, one of the penalties. 
And you can see it was quite a bigger turn turnout as well, where we yeah had the big goals um, face, facing each other and then just, yeah, in the end, playing a smaller game, not too competitive, right? But just to make sure everyone has fun and is enjoying it. Um, a few more high five and I'm, sh I'm not sure if every one of you guys have been to the Point Loma Nazarene soccer field it's also a beautiful place you know it's, it looks uh, right over the sunset cliffs um, so even if there's no event going on but hopefully you know every one of you guys will join the events in the future but in the end it's also just a really great place to just you know look at the sunset um, here's another station of the slaloms and this is also why i included of course one the same picture actually that you guys use with becker but i also included a picture with francesco i did not have a picture with francesco from the actual event that's why i took one from his facebook but i definitely wanted to you know make sure he's included in this um, in the slides i took i put together um and then another two action photos um, and then this is actually Garrett. Um, and here you can see we actually have some uh, workout stations as well where Garrett's doing um, uh, high jumps as well and push-ups, which is awesome. <laughs> and then you can see in the back here actually already the pizzas and getting set up. Um, which again, is one of my favorite parts as well. <laughs> um, and then yeah, at the end again, we eat pizza. We just reflect on, you know, what we did, um, which was always also good besides, you know, being active, you know, in terms of playing soccer and running around and working out, it was also just good to talk and answer questions and just chat with everyone, to be honest. Awesome, that's pretty much it. Um, it was just a short, I guess, reflection on, you know, what we usually do for you guys to also get a better idea of, yeah, what obviously everyone knows kind of like what soccer is. And again, as you guys didn't know, in, in the Europe, or might not know in Europe, we call it football and not soccer. There's no American football here. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, awesome. Then let me have a few notes. So also what I wanted to talk to you guys about is definitely the experience with ATPF, right? And I guess also maybe go a little bit more into depth, like what I do now. Um, but I guess my experience overall with ATPF, you know, it was amazing really, you know, working close with Lisa, Dana, um, Becca, Garrett, John, um, Francesco, you know, having fun at the events with all of you guys, you know, just gave me so much. I want to say, you know, and I want to be able to, um, take part within, you know, such a great organization moving forward as well. Like I said already before, of course, it's harder when you're not physically pres um, present and you're overseas. But in the end, you know, I love following the program. You know, I definitely want to also take more parts into these, like lunch and learns, for example, right? And hopefully once I can travel again, I will be able to, um, to yeah, visit the family, the HPF family over there. Um, exactly. I think in terms of most inspiring moments, I think I already covered it at the beginning, just kind of like, not just, of course, most important for me is to see the joy, you know, but in the end also what it gives the, the people who are actually, you know, were kind of like um, leading, you know, were mentoring and some of the kids during these events, like some of my teammates, but actually seeing like how it impacted them and how they want to now, even like later on, you know, how they're getting involved with different kind of organization. That's something that I really value and I'm really, um, yeah, excited about you know to have like such an impact as well in the end um exactly and then um yeah let me briefly share about you know what i'm doing now and just i guess how my journey um looked since i left san diego and atpf and maybe share some also what i mentioned at the beginning some best practices in terms of you know the pandemic as well as it's a tough situation you know, for all of us. So maybe we can learn from each other here as well and have kind of like a conversation as well um, once I, I shared, I guess, um, something on a personal level as well. Um, but yeah, I guess, you know, first of all, I'm fortunate and blessed to still have a job um, in this hard time. So have been busy with work, actually. Um, I was briefly mentioning at the beginning, I do digital advertising. And as you guys, uh, guys might know, um, you know, uh, well, figured a lot of people now are purchasing online at Amazon and given the pandemic um, and therefore, you know, that keeps us busy. Um, but other than that, I recently was thinking more and more, you know, what are some of the things you did in the past year that you, um, how do you say, you might not have done if there wasn't a pandemic in the end. Um, first and foremost, I think for me, because of the pandemic, I was actually living at home again, you know, after many years abroad. Um, I left Germany when I was 20 years old. 
um, you know, and since then I only went to see my parents for like a summer break, for a winter break. Um, and I really, really enjoyed, you know, being at home during the time. Actually, you know, there wasn't also much, much distraction. Uh, of course, it wasn't chosen, chosen, but in the end, you know, there wasn't places open. You weren't allowed to see friends, um, but that really helped me, you know, be more present, I would say, um, at home, be with my parents. We talked a lot about, let's say, recent years. Um, I was able to see my grandma, for example, right a few times from distance, I guess, but still, you know, just had like longer walks, um, watched movies, um, you know, and I felt like I caught up on some time with my parents there. So that's definitely something um, I, I appreciated during the last year, you know, where I think I took advantage of actually a little bit. Um, and then also used the FaceTime and Zoom to catch up with several friends. Um, you know, that also live all around the world, um, where sometimes you're quite busy, you know, while you're working and you're trying to rush after work to I don't get a workout in and so on, or just uh, read a book, whatever. Um, but in the end, it helped me to, you know, also sit down and chat with people who have you, who you have not talked for a longer time and also, you know, more on a more um, deep and personal level, I guess. Um, but at that point, I actually want to ask you guys, um, have you guys played Scribble before uh, online with your friends eventually? Do you guys know the, word, the game Scribble? I played Scrabble in person, not online though. Not online, it's great. It's like a, write a drawing and get, guessing name, a uh, game. And in the end, you can play with your friends all around the world in all languages, super fun. Um, I can put the link in there or share it with you, Becca, and you can maybe share it with the video later on. Um, it's called scribble.io, but in the end, that's actually what we use a lot of work now um, on Fridays on like a um, kind of like a, where we talk about the weekend, for example, right? Kind of like to distract from work in the end. But we, I ended up actually playing with friends as well because it's super fun. So definitely recommend that as like an online game to play with someone who can't visit you at the moment. Um, awesome. And then, yeah, but in general, I can give, you know, I guess one advice from you know, being fortunate uh, to have lived in different countries, meeting great people, living in different cultures. It's really, I would say, um, three things, actually. Um, first and foremost, um, you know, never judge anyone in any sense. Um, that's always kind of like my, my number one, um, my number one thing I live with. And, but in the end, second, I would say, don't shy away, you know, to put yourself in uncomfortable situation. You know, it could be an event even with, with, um, with a lot of people, for example, but in the end, Anything um, um, like that, you know, personally, I grew a lot from those situations. You know, if it's changed, I think oftentimes, you know, not being in control of a situation, which I guess you can also kind of like um, say as getting out of your comfort zone, but that also really, you know, um, allowed me to grow, especially my English wasn't good at all. I mean, you can see, I still kind of like struggle with some vocabulary and so on, but in the end, right, my school English wasn't good at all. I came to the US to play soccer, that's all I knew. Um, and yeah, so I, you know, you learn as you go. So that's one advice, I think, for me, if, as much as I can give advice here. Um, but and then third, I would say taking things, you know, taking things how they come and making the best out of it and growing from it. Um, because I truly believe, you know, everything builds up on, on uh, builds up on each other, right? So for example, if I didn't decide to play for a certain club soccer in Germany, I would not have gotten to play for the school in North Carolina. At North Carolina, I met someone who connected me to Point Loma Nazarene University, which in the end helped me to go to San Diego. But actually in North Carolina, like I mentioned, I was involved with the similar project as ATPF, just, uh, just a lot smaller. You know, I wanted to keep it going. And this, this in the end had me um, yeah, reach out to Lisa and ATPF and um, yeah, we're one friends for life and made great memories, to be honest. Um, and then maybe for my last few minutes, um, you know, we can create maybe again more of a conversation as well. So maybe picking up what I shared more of a personal level that, you know, for example, I was lucky to take advantage of being at home, just being more present with my parents. But I would love to hear maybe about some of you guys, you know, who else wants to share either um, what you're able to do during the pandemic that you might not have done before or something maybe that you learned um, out of a situation that you wanted to share. Um, that would be cool. And of course, if you had any questions about um, something I was saying the last few minutes here. <laughs> And Chris, people have been typing in stuff since we started, right. so Rebecca could read you in some of those too if you want, Rebecca. Sure. I haven't seen any questions yet, so feel free to unmute yourself um, if I missed it. But we did have, you know, people telling about their mentorship um, 
experiences. Um, and I'd love to um, say a little bit about Chris and how you mentored Hunter so well. Um, shout out to Hunter, our current PLNU liaison. Um, he has gone above and beyond and he's just an amazing volunteer. And you've turned that whole soccer team into incredible volunteers. Um, I know that Glenn is on the call and Glenn actually did uh, made a partnership with Flip Force, um, which is a gym. And we did an open gym activity day for our families. And we did, did two or three events, but one of them, we had the whole soccer team come and participate with our, our kids. And it was so much fun. And they made that event <laughs> and they loved it. And then they also um, really pulled it together last year um, during COVID um, when we were doing our year end campaign Giving Tuesday, the soccer players um, did this amazing thing on Instagram. I don't know, but they raised a ton of money and and motivated their friends and family to give back to Autism Tree and raised over $700 for Autism Tree, which was just mind blowing. So, and they were such great advocates for our kids and our families. And so you started all that. So I wanted to give, you know, you special gratitude um, for mentoring, not only Hunter, but the whole soccer team. Um, I just love it. And then John Hickey, thanks so much, John, for being on the call. He's like, I suppose I've mentored a few people over the years, but never a formal mentorship. John definitely mentors me. <laughs> I can say that. Um, and he says, Chris, where are you now? We covered this a little bit, but. Yeah, right now, actually, I'm in Glasgow uh, in Scotland. Um, so you can see I probably was a little bit bright at the beginning. It's now 8.45 at night, 8.45 p.m. So that's why it gets darker and darker right now. Um, but yeah, I have been, I moved to Glasgow to work um, in March last year. So pretty much when the pandem pandemic started. Um, but in the end, throughout the summer and throughout the winter, I actually went back home. And that's what I was telling. I was living with my family, you know, where I was able to spend more time with them. Um, but pretty much due to the pandemic, to be honest. And then after Christmas in February, I think, or after the winter break, I went back to Glasgow where I am right now. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And so you lived in the U.S. for what, seven or eight years? Um, seven years, exactly. Seven years. Yeah. Seven and a half. <laughs> Did you experience any like reverse culture shock when you came back? Oh, I love the American culture. Like I loved, um, I loved, honestly, I loved the East Coast. I loved North Carolina. I loved California, obviously completely different, right? In terms of culture, everything. But I, I don't know. I, I just loved all of it, to be honest. Um, what was something that you missed from home um, that you were happy to experience again when you got back? So my dad is a chef, actually. Um, yep. So definitely the food at home, I would say. <laughs> but besides that, you know, just, yeah, I guess the family, just hanging out with family, seeing them more, even though, you know, with grandma was on like a long distance, like long distance, uh, like on, on a distance, right? Um, but still, I guess being closer to family in general um, was, was a good thing. Yeah, I know I can speak for a lot of us when we say that this has been a definite time that we're grateful for spending with our loved ones. Um, and we're not taking it for granted, you know, anymore. Um, and seeing them in person is definitely special. So uh, I also wanted to give a shout out. Francisco actually joined us from Brazil. Francisco, I don't know if you're able to unmute yourself, but we'd love for you to say something to Chris while he's here. Hi, Chris. I came a little bit late because the time zone it was kind of confusing, but uh, it's a pleasure to me see you here and hear about your story. You are my favorite German soccer player, <laughs> of course. <laughs> and I miss you all, guys. ATPF family and Chris and and here in Brazil we are facing a tough time now because the pandemic and autistic people as well here uh, they are facing a lot of challenges here because we are um, in the peak of the pandemic then the numbers are rising a lot unfortunately but I hope we we can we can go through this and quickly and and back to the normal life. And I'm very sure 
that I'm gonna, I, I will be in ATPF soon to volunteer and to help and to do something together, I'm sure. Oh, oh. <laughs> thank you, Francisco, for sharing. We miss you and, and so happy that you were able to join us. And yes, definitely, we hope to all see you again in person. And I'm just so glad that we have Zoom so we can connect together now. <laughs> And I sure, have, I hope. oh, sorry, go ahead. No, no, just, just saying, sure, I hope so. I, we, we can get together uh, mm -hmm. quickly. Mm -hmm. We're staying strong and mentally and in the heart too. Um, and thank you to everyone who's been typing their comments in the chat. Um, we have a couple, we're about time, but I'd like to read them if anybody wants to stay on. Um, and so I wanted to say, Karen says, I worked in the library at PLNU for eight years and my daughter, Kathy Johnson, graduated from there. Tim and I are members, Tim is her husband, of the first church located on the campus. You are a huge blessing, Chris. And then John, John says, Chris, thank you for sharing the PLNU soccer mentor program and leaving a legacy for your teammates to carry on. <laughs> Thanks, John. Thanks for helping to build it. <laughs> I love those throwback pictures with you and Francisco and with you and John and Lisa. It was um, really special. And I love that um, in 2017, I joined in 2017 in September, so later that year. And so one of your soccer events was one of my first events ever. And I was so nervous. And then I got there on the field and I called you and you were so sweet and down to earth, easygoing. And I was like, okay, this is going to be okay. <laughs> because you and the whole soccer team were just wonderful. So uh, this was so special. Does anybody else have any last minute things what they want to say before we go? Jeff, go ahead. Uh, well, uh, first off, Chris, uh, great job. Um, great job with your presentation today. And um, I don't know if you've noticed in the comments, but um, I have an aunt who lives in New Mexico. She used to live in um, Washington, D.C., um, and she is a really, really rabid soccer fan. Um, and, uh, and then, uh, and like Francisco said, I'm also I'm trying to get back out to San Diego as well. It's my um, West Coast base. So, um, I mean, I'm, you know, I'm in the same boat as everybody else on here. I can't wait to get back in person, so. Yeah, thanks Jeff. I love how soccer just unites everyone globally. It's yeah, powerful. thanks for sharing Jeff. What's your, um, your aunt's uh, favorite team? Uh, I think her favorite team, I would probably say is the New England Revolution. Okay. Because she's from, we're, we're all from like the North, we're from the Northeast and stuff, so. Nice. What's your favorite team, Chris? Um, uh, it's actually, it's also like where I'm from. It's called Borussia München Gladbach. <laughs> <laughs> That's a mouthful. But I guess, you know, it's also where I'm from. It's like the, the soccer club where I used to go with my dad to watch some games and so on. So, yeah. Oh, that's special. Francisco, do you have a favorite soccer team in Brazil? Yeah, yeah, it's the best of the world. It's Corinthians. It's uh, um, I cheer for Corinthians since I was a baby, and it's my passion. <laughs> I love how Franciel is shaking her finger. <laughs> also from Brazil. Do you want to share, Franciel? Who's your favorite team? Oh, you're on mute. Hold on, I'm gonna ask you to unmute. Okay, so my favorite is. Avaí is from Florianópolis. <laughs> it's better. To That's see. a good one. That's a good one. Yeah. Love it. Some friendly competition. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you everyone so much for joining. This was so much fun. And Chris, thank you again for sharing all that you did. We miss you and love you and so excited to you know, have this time with you. And um, we will definitely all stay connected with each other moving forward through this whole world journey. <laughs> so I'd love to take a group picture um, before we all go. So I will um, 
Oh, I love it. John, you typed something German in the chat. I cannot read it, but maybe Christian. <laughs> okay, I'll do a picture. Ready? One, two, three. Love it. <laughs> Got it. Thanks, everyone. Thank um, you, guys. Take care, guys. Thank you. Have a great day and week. We'll see you next week. You too. Bye. Bye.